it'd be very easy and lazy to say Jamar Chase and said top two or three ranked wide receiver Cooper Cup, whoever, are going to be the top two touchdown getters in 2020. Three. I'm not going to be cookie cutter here and I'm not taking him out because he in my opinion will lead the league in touchdowns in 2023 Jamar Chase but I'm not here to be cookie cutter and then I'm going to throw a Cooper Cup a Tyreek Hill or whoever in this number two spot I'm here to tell you that this man right here Amon Ra St. Brown will be right up there with Jamar Chase if he doesn't finish number one in total touchdowns by a wide receiver here what I'm saying I'm talking about a wide receiver scoring more touchdowns overall running receiving it gives him quite an advantage because he could run for 200 300 yards and two to three touchdowns these wrs right here total touchdown monsters in 2023 if jamar chase doesn't finish number one this man will Amon Ross St. Brown. And I'll give you a number three name at the end of it all. A guy that if St. Brown doesn't make it into the top two in total touchdowns scored for wide receivers, this third guy will. The Fantasy Football Show Bold Edition, because that's the only way we roll, begins right now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Take a lap. Let's kick it off with Jamar Chase, my number one ranked wide receiver in 2023. Hands down, I know some of you love JJ. I know some of you think JJ is going to have 2,000 yards and finally get like a 15 touchdown season. I don't feel like Minnesota is set up to have him be a consistent 10 plus touchdown wide receiver. I think he's talented enough to do it, but I think we have enough sample size to say that Jamar Chase is a much higher likelihood to get more than 12, 14, 15 touchdowns if there's anybody in the national football league capable of having a 20 touchdown wide receiver season in 2023 or really in the next five years it's this guy right here marvin harrison jr when he comes in we'll we'll assess that as it unfolds but for right now there is no wide receiver in the national football league in my opinion that has situation talent all of it combined that makes the wide receiver capable of a 18 to 20 to 22 touchdown season Fantasy football worlds back in the day were spoiled with Randy Moss when he scored over 20 touchdowns in his 2007 season with Tom Brady, 20 three touchdowns but man you even forget sometimes you got to look at this stuff and be like oh my god I, I i i took it for granted 2003 17 touchdowns 2015 touchdowns 1998 i don't think people realize how good randy moss was 69 receptions 1300 yards 17 touchdowns if there is a wide receiver that exists in the nfl that could be 17 18 even 20 even let's call it 20 21 19 18 if there's a receiver in the NFL that has the situation and talent combined because you need both to make this happen, it's Jamar Chase. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Kirk Cousins could deliver an 18 touchdown season to JJ. I, I don't think so. I don't think it's even remotely possible. Whereas Joe Burrow is getting better every day. His offensive line is improving every year. Joe Burrow will have the best offensive line he's ever had jamar chase was injured last year for a big part of the year hampered by that hip and he missed some time on top of that and he's still atop the league in points per target we're about to see i believe a 1500 1600 maybe more but let's call it 1500 yard wide receiver season out of jamar chase and a 15 we'll call it 15 plus to be safe touchdown season in 2023 but again if anybody's capable of reaching 18 19 20 getting into the 20s it's this man right here and it's not even close i could understand someone being skeptical i could understand somebody saying hey smitty look you know uh he got hurt last year i'm worried about the hip and i and i get all that but if i'm sitting there number one overall in a ppr format or 0.5 like an underdog fantasy promo code smitty where are you drafting jamar chase are you taking him number one overall link in description but in 0.5 ppr or especially full ppr where it's three wide receivers mandatory this is the easy 1.1 for me if we nail it down to two running backs two wide receivers mandatory and one flex i might lean Bijan. number one overall in redraft number one overall 
and redraft. You heard me correct. I'm not putting Christian McCaffrey there. It's Bijan. I draft him there too. I don't just quietly like him, number one. I draft him there. But, you know, not to give you all these different combinations, but if it was two wide receiver mandatory, two running back mandatory, one flex, but full PPR, I probably would go Jamar Chase number one. It just kind of depends on what I think I can get away with with the individuals I'm drafting with. Meaning, if I think I can grab a bunch of Kenneth Walkers and, and Pachecos later, I might go wide receiver in a PPR, even if it was two running backs, two wide receivers in a flex, where I do kind of lean toward the idea of maybe I kick around, kick the tires on a Bijan number one overall. But you could say average in general, no matter the format, this is my number one overall player in 2023 fantasy football and you can bet your bottom dollar on making every attempt to cuff him whether it's best ball or not to joseph cigar smoking burrow and i'll reach around three if i've got to get it done but man if you get jamar chase at number one overall and you still get burrow in, f- in round four you might as well walk right to the bank and tell him show him your little piece of paper say hey here's my team right here I've got to put it right up against the glass. Say, I would like an, an advance, an IOU on my squad. Look at it. Take a gander at it. Absorb it. Take it in. Joe Burrow, round four. Jamar Chase, number one overall. You don't even need to see who I took in the in the third round, in the second round. You walk straight to the bank. Jamar Chase, 1,500 yards, 15-plus touchdowns, the most capable wide receiver of scoring 18, 20, 21 touchdowns in the National Football League and you include a couple rushing in there total touchdowns that's Jamar Chase even if we take the rushing touchdowns out for him I mean I'm including rushing touchdowns when I talk about this topic but let's take him out for a second he still could score 18 or 20 receiving touchdowns this is the only guy that can do that in the National Football League he's the only player with the skill set and the situation Joseph Cigar Smoking Burrow on an improving Bengal team that I think will win a Super Bowl, at least one Super Bowl in the next three years. Get on your horse, baby. And on top of that, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow are going to be together forever. They don't want to leave each other's side. They give hometown discounts to stay together. This is the future. And now it's time to talk about why this guy is going to dance and have a cup of coffee with Jamar Chase in touchdowns in 2023. Giddy up, say, Brown. But Smitty St. Brown isn't a touchdown guy. He scored five and six touchdowns in his two seasons. This guy isn't a a player scoring double digit or 14 touchdown seasons, Smitty. I've got an entire video on on this topic, so I'm not going to dive into this too deeply, but also reference the link in the description if you want more on St. Brown and his monster campaign that that is awaiting 2023. A layman's going to look at this line and say, okay, 912 and five TDs. 11, 61, and 6 TDs. And they're going to say to themselves, this guy's going to get 5, 6, 7 touchdowns. He's not a 10, 12, double-digit touchdown player. But that couldn't be further from the truth. And I broke this down in tremendous detail. Again, the link is in the description of the video. St. Brown is arguably, when healthy, one of the top three or four overall wide receivers in terms of potency, being able to score playmaking in the entire National Football League. Looking at the stats, which again, I broke down in tremendous detail in the other video, St. Brown's rookie year. Yeah, they're targeting him. He's getting involved in weeks one through 12, but it's week 13 that he becomes the number one wide receiver and the shift happens and he goes into 12 target mode. He goes into absolute sun god mode from weeks 13 through 18. Not a couple of the weeks, not two out of four, not four out of five, six straight weeks, one, two, three, four, five, six weeks in a row of becoming a dominant wide receiver in the National Football League, pulling in double digit targets in six straight games, holding in at least eight receptions in every single one of those six games, having two 100 yard games, two 90 yard games, an 86 yard game, a 73 yard game, and six touchdowns if you include this running touchdown here in this six game span. Double digit targets, over 11 targets a game, nearly 90 yards a game, and scores a touchdown in every single game but this week 14 outing, but he made up for that by scoring two scores in 17. No wide receiver but JJ outscored St. Brown in that six game span. And not only that, it's not like one or two of the weeks made him get to that level. You can literally look at each week individually and go week 13, it's JJ St. Brown. Week 14, 15, 16, 17, you could literally go into 
each one of those weeks individually or look at 13 and 14, 13, 14, 15, 13, 14, 15, 16. You can, you can couple these weeks any way you want and St. Brown's in the top five. Then you say, okay, Smitty, that's the end of the year. Could this be an anomaly of six weeks in a row? No, because immediately in his second year, I don't think people realize he's only been in the league two years. He's walking into his third year breakout season. His second year, what does he start off with? 12 targets, 12 targets, 64 yards, 116. One touchdown, two touchdowns. He literally started off 2023 more explosive and potent than he was playing out the gate in 2022 when he was the number two wide receiver in fantasy football behind just JJ. He's literally playing better than that. He has a cluster of three touchdowns here. And, and, and looking back at this right here, the cluster of touchdowns here, you don't just cluster six touchdowns together in a six game span. Then walk into your next season, the immediate next two games and clustered together three touchdowns, a 68 yard rushing affair with 116 yards, 64 yards and, and back to back 12 target games. He was literally in sun god mode. The final six weeks, the first two weeks and that's when he suffered the ankle injury which obviously hampered him all year until about this week 12 where he again clustered together three tds two 100 yard games and really anytime this guy had double digit targets you're seeing 119 and 11 you're seeing 10 and 122 he's absolutely going crazy and he was hampered all year he never really got back on track the team was at the five yard line or closer on a crazy number of, of plays in 2023 something that will not be replicated that's why jamal williams had a weird unusual 17 touchdown season st brown was tackled at the one yard line a couple times he got the concussion on top of the ankle injury and you could say injury is a concern for you and i'd at least understand your argument but that's the only case you have there's too much going on here in these two seasons to look at to walk away with he's a five or a six touchdown guy smitty it's on screen here five and six touchdowns back to back uh you know about a thousand yards and five or six scores that's what he's gonna do maybe 95 receptions wrong wrong no he is not a five or six touchdown guy he's not if you can't see that he was kicking off the 2022 season in the exact same fashion he finished and closed out six straight games in 2021. You're blinded by something that I can't really assess. I don't know if it's Detroit Lion doubt, if it's that you never saw him coming, so therefore you want to double down and try and be right eventually that he's not the same guy that people say he might be. You don't score nine touchdowns in eight straight games. Nine touchdowns in eight straight games. If people don't see the concussion and the ankle injury hampering this other part of the season, hampering this week's five through 18, if you can't consider that on top of the Detroit Lions being on like the five and one yard line constantly all year long, which won't happen again, if you can't put all that together on top of that Jameer Gibbs is going to be in motion all over the field, this staff has said that they lined him up. There was a beat writer that said they lined him up at wide receiver on one play. The very next play, he was in the backfield. The very next play, he was out at wide receiver, motioned across, went back into the backfield, and takes the handoff back to back to back plays they're moving him all around the field defenses will be worried where jameer gibbs is at all times the detroit coaching staff has said we want to get st brown down the field they're going to be stretching the field more with st brown he's going to be untouchable unguardable incapable of being double teamed given where he's moving around to stretching the field darting across the middle of the field jameer gibbs all over the place monty keeping defenses honest between the tackles both gibby and monty being on the field at the same time saint brown is going to have a field day and when you mix in this kid can run for 68 yards on the ground on two totes of the rock had a rushing touchdown in the final six weeks of 2021 when you account for he could have 200 230 rushing yards on the ground and at least one to three touchdowns i'm telling you right now you're gonna look silly if you think five or six touchdowns is what his number is going to be at the end of 2023 this is the most capable player of being the number one or number two touchdown getting total touchdown getting wide receiver in the national football league in 2023 buckle up saint brown doubters it's going to be a long year
I'm going to say Garrett Wilson's the next likely guy if we're not going cookie cutter and we're trying to be ahead of the curve here. He's the next guy to be up there in the 1-2-1-3 one, one, overall touchdown getting ranking. This is a guy that with Aaron Rodgers spoon feeding wide receivers over the course of his career, turning Devontae Adams into Devontae Adams. Smitty, Smitty, did you just say Aaron Rodgers turned Devontae Adams into Devontae Adams? You got to be out of your mind if you think Devontae Adams as he is today would have been the same player if it weren't for Aaron Rodgers. We've seen Aaron Rodgers fast track wide receiver after wide receiver. No one's saying Devontae Adams wouldn't be a top five to ten wide receiver no one's saying Devonte adams wouldn't have been a magnificent number one wide receiver for years and years to come but we will never really know what adams would have turned into without aaron Rodgers. and no one's saying adams going to the raiders wasn't going to lead to some good production because Derek carr does laser lock on wide receivers kind of like aaron Rodgers does so alave season is here to stay and quite arguably you know what while we're at it alave needs to be talked about here in fact i'm going to amend everything i just said the these are the two equal candidates for the number two overall wide receiver touchdown getter in 2023, especially because this guy could also run for one or two or more touchdowns on the ground. And so honestly, I think they're both neck and neck. Both guys are going to be top five or six wide receivers in 2023. Put them both inside my top six. You can at me all you want. You can say things like, and I'm used to it, Smitty, how are you, who are you going to bump out of the top six if Olave and Wilson are ahead of these guys? Who, Smitty? It happens every year. A Cooper Cup or a Diggs could fall out into the top seven or eight very easily. A Tyreek Hill could fall outside the top five with Tua going down and a rotational quarterback situation going on in Miami. Give me a break if you think both these guys can't be inside the top five but real quickly back to Garrett Wilson Aaron Rodgers force feeds wide receivers and Adams no one's taken away what Adams became he went to the Raiders he was magnificent there as well which is why I love Olave because Derek Carr is going to spoon feed him this guy could get you 12 14 total touchdowns very easily but has upside for even more than that especially when you account for the couple that he could get on the ground would not shock me if Garrett Wilson, Alave, Jamar Chase, and St. Brown are all inside the top six wide receiver TD getters in 2023. Get ready. Get ready. The changing of the guard is here at wide receiver. The changing of the guard is here at wide receiver. And if you think these guys, these young dogs in Alave and Wilson and St. Brown and Jamar Chase, if you think all Four of those guys can't be in the top five in touchdowns and in fantasy production. It's going to be a painful year for you, young man. Why don't you get out of here and go draft these four monsters on Underdog Fantasy promo code Smitty. Link in description. I want to know where you're taking these bad boys in 2023. Smitty approved. Smitty approved. Smitty approved. Smitty approved. Smitty approved. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty.